Welcome to Ecomax page on the Max website. Uh, I'm DG Markle. Today we're talking with uh, Robert Tabor with Advanced Insulation Technology. And basically what these guys do and what Robert's company does is this new spray foam insulation for your attic. Uh, Robert, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in this real quick. And then what is the spray, the spray foam insulation? as far as and its advantages over the traditional uh, stuff you'll show us here in just a minute. Sure. Well, that's a lot of answer, but <clears throat> I started about four years ago, started the company. I've been building homes and was in the construction industry and found that standard fiberglass just wasn't doing what I thought it should do. I researched this product and found it and then in started to install it. And with several hundred installs now and the data that we've generated and energy bills that come back to these homeowners, we realize this is it's a significant improvement over standard insulation, being able to cut power bills by up to half of what normal usage is. Well, listen, I, let's assume I, I'm, a, I'm a busy parent and uh, I care about my home, my children, and the environment we live in. I want to be cost conscious and save energy. Sure. Uh, I've seen a little bit about the spray foam. I'd like to get more information. Talk a little bit about the advantages of, of the spray foam in there and what it means to the energy bills and what does it do that traditional insulation doesn't do. And sure. then if you'll uh, share with us a little bit about uh, your uh, uh, kind of a, your show and tell here that really paints the picture of the advantages of the spray foam. And, and this really shows why polyurethane foam does so efficiently and performs the way it does. Air movement is one of the biggest keys to keeping a house or a structure maintained at a certain temperature. Uh, studies have shown that about 50% of the heating and cooling that is used is, to, is used to heat and cool the same air over and over again because it's leaving or entering a structure. Polyurethane foam stops air movement. It does not allow air to come in and out at its leisure. Fiberglass insulation or other types, even cellulose, allow air movement and therefore you have thermal migration and even moisture transmission. What happens is you're using more energy to heat and cool the same structure over and over again, whereas you can do it, like I said, for about half using a polyurethane foam insulation. And these are just standard light bulbs and these are generating close to 92 degrees Fahrenheit in this heat, in this environment down here, which is not too far away from what an attic would be. With air movement, it brings that heat, almost all of it, through. In fact, this calibration may be off by a degree or so, but it's showing almost the full measure coming through because of that air movement up to the top side of this fiberglass, which tr should be stopping that heat transfer. As you'll see on, on this side with polyurethane foam, it has lost about 10 degrees, and it's more of the temperature of the air around it as opposed to pushing that temperature through. Again, it goes back to the ability to stop airflow, which stops heat transfer. It also stops moisture movement. Uh, but this is the really telling sign where almost all the airflow is coming through. Different applications. This is one where it's in a wall cavity. I don't know how well that, that may show up. But the polyurethane is sprayed as a liquid and then it hardens immediately. And this is what it looks like in its finished form. It'll fill up a wall cavity or even spray to the underside of a roof deck. There's different varieties. There's uh, a lighter density foam, which is used in, uh, in roof decks or in wall cavities. There's a higher density foam, which has slightly different characteristics, uh, but is also used in roof decks and wall cavities, and even in walk-in coolers uh, or in moisture-prone areas. There's, of course, there's a single component which comes in a can. A lot, you can pick this up at a local hardware store. Um, and it has similar properties. It's also a polyurethane. It's a little harder to work with, uh, and you wouldn't want to do a whole house with it. But it certainly is usable to seal up smaller cracks and crevices to stop the air movement. Well, uh, Robert, if there's one other thing that you would like to say to those who are viewing this particular thing online and the advantages of the, of the spray foam, uh, what, what would be the, like, the closing thing you'd say about it? Sure. Well, I would say that there is, there's always a cost and a payback to most anything that you're trying to work with. The home is the biggest investment that most anybody's going to have. It's the biggest financial asset. 
polyurethane foam will certainly pay for itself. There's a higher cost up front, but in all the studies that we've seen, usually within a three to five year period, that cost is going to be offset with lowered energy bills. Also, the house is going to be much more comfortable to live in. You won't have drafts, hot and cold spots throughout. So over the long run, it's a wise investment.